<clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Brian Mason. I'm the district attorney for Colorado's 17th Judicial District, which includes Adams and Broomfield counties, which also, of course, includes Commerce City. I'm joined today by Deputy United States Attorney Chris Larson from the U.S. Attorney's Office and by Commander Dennis Flynn of the Commerce City Police Department and the North Metro Task Force. On February 20th of 2022, earlier this year, five residents of our community died from fentanyl poisoning in what was one of the largest mass incidents of this nature in the United States. Since that time, we have had a multi-agency, massive investigation into their deaths. The U.S. Attorney's Office, the Commerce City Police Department, the Drug Enforcement Agency, the North Metro Task Force, and the District Attorney's Office have for more than six months engaged in a massive collaborative investigation to determine who was responsible for selling the drugs that led to these deaths. We have tracked down and followed up and investigated every possible lead from witness interviews to video surveillance to DNA evidence to phone records. We have followed up on every single lead. And as of this moment today, we do not have the evidence to charge anyone with these deaths. Fentanyl is the most dangerous drug on our streets. It is killing our young people, as is illustrated by the deaths of these five young people in February. And the problem is only getting worse. The evidence in this case, in this case strongly shows that these five individuals did not know that they were taking drugs laced with fentanyl that night. And they did not know that what they were ingesting would kill them. I have personally spoken with representatives from each of the victims' families. They understand the status of the investigation and the status of this case. This case is not closed. If we get more leads, if we get more evidence, if we get more tips, if technology changes and we're able to evaluate current evidence in a new way, we will do so. And we will follow up again on every single tip and every single lead that we get. But again, as of today, we do not have the evidence to charge anyone either at the state or federal level with these deaths. My heart goes out to each of the families who have lost loved ones in this tragic incident. I want to thank our law enforcement partners for the extraordinary work that they have all done over the last six months. As I stated, fentanyl is the most dangerous drug on the streets right now. But it is only getting worse. We are already seeing other synthetic opioids even more powerful and even more dangerous than fentanyl hitting our streets. And although in this case, these five victims clearly did not know they were ingesting fentanyl, now more than six months later, the circumstances on the streets have changed. More and more people have become addicted unwittingly to fentanyl by taking drugs that were laced with fentanyl that they originally did not know of. And yet now they do know that they are addicted to fentanyl and they are seeking it out and more people are dying. And that is why it is so important for parents of young people, for parents of 
middle school students, high school students, college students to warn your kids about this drug. No drug is safe, and any of these drugs can kill you. Investigating fentanyl poisoning remains a priority for everyone on this stage. And I genuinely hope that someday we will be able to find and hold accountable those who are responsible for these deaths. But based on the evidence that we have today, we do not have the ability to charge anyone today, and I do not know that we ever will. That is a sad outcome to a tragic case, but is illustrative of how challenging this drug is for us in law enforcement and how hard it is for us to deal with this overwhelming problem. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions you may well, have. It was cocaine, right? The, it was cocaine that was laced. Is that correct? We believe they thought it was cocaine, yes. And were you able to determine the source of the cocaine, who stole the cocaine? Because this is still an active investigation, I can't get into specific details. But I can tell you this. In order for us to charge someone with these deaths, we need to have an identifiable suspect who we can prove sold the drugs that were laced with the fentanyl that killed these five individuals. And we do not have that today. Is that even possible, do you think, to find someone? Has anyone ever been charged with lacing a drug with fentanyl? Do you know of? Well, as you may know, in Colorado until recently, we didn't have a distribution of fentanyl causing death statute. So that just changed. The federal government has had that statute, and it is my understanding that, yes, they have used that statute before. So I do believe there have been prosecutions across the country where we have been able to hold accountable f drug dealers who have sold fentanyl leading to someone's death. We do not have that evidence in this case today. Did you ever identify uh, a person or people of interest? We followed up on multiple potential leads. In terms of specifics on who they may have been, I can't answer that question. And how would you describe the status of the case right now? Inactive, cold? I think it's cold. Uh, we have followed every single lead. It is not closed. We're not closing the investigation. We're not declining to prosecute. Everyone on this stage who has worked for six months wants to be able to bring a case to court. But as I said, we have followed every single lead that we have. We've examined every piece of evidence, and we don't have the evidence to charge anyone. So the case at this point is no longer active, but still open. And the family members, family members of at least one of the victims um, sent a statement out expressing their disappointment with your decision. What would you say to them? What have you said to them about your decision? I've spoken to each of the family members, and I don't think it's accurate to say that they are disappointed with my decision because I haven't made a decision not to prosecute. Nobody has made a decision not to prosecute. What we have communicated to the families and what I'm now communicating to the public, given the massive interest in this case, is that we don't have the evidence to prosecute. We want it. We're looking. We have tracked down all kinds of leads, but right now we do not have the evidence that we need. This is a nation of laws. I have to follow the law. I cannot just bring a case against someone without the evidence to back it up. Do you happen to know how many fentanyl-related deaths the district has had last year and this year? I don't have that number off the top of my head, but I'm happy to look for it for you. Are there any other questions? Are you disappointed, or do you think you have a better outcome, or what's your reaction to I think this is disappointing to all of us. It's personally disappointing to me. I know that it's disappointing for our families. We all want to seek justice for these five victims. And I hope that we will still be able to. 
But based on what we have so far, I do not know that that day will ever come. Thank you. Thank you very much.